Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll show you guys how to backtest a pairs trading strategy using futures data. But instead of using a pair or two contracts, here I'll be using four. So to give you an overview of how I'm using four contracts is that I'm using three contracts to predict one. So here in this, in this chart, I have a basket of contracts, which is Y hat, which is trying to predict the value of this wheat contract, which is the blue line. So I'm trying to find co-integration between the basket and a futures contract. In this case, the basket is trying to predict the wheat contract. And as you can see, they kind of correlate with each other. So essentially I'm being long the undervalued contract or contracts and also short the overvalued one. And in this case, we have wheat, which we are trying to predict by using gold. I think this is the soybean meal contract and the S&P 500. So I'm going to use R to get some weights to apply to these three contracts, which will give us our predicted value of this wheat contract. So again, whenever the basket is above the wheat contract, I'm going to short the basket and long the wheat contract. And then when the wheat contract is below the basket, then I will long the wheat contract and then short the basket of contracts. And all these values we calculate in R. And I'll show you how to do that in the script that we will be going over. But just to give you an overview of what these columns are, I'll zoom in a little bit so we can see these better. So here we have our signal generated for the strategy I just went over. Asset one through four are the prices of each of the contracts so that we keep track of the entry price and the exit price. And the exit, I think I didn't go over that. So we will exit or zero out our contracts whenever Y hat and the contract we're trying to predict cross over. So asset one through asset four are just our entry or exit prices. Uh, points one through points four are just the gross profit of the strategy for each of the contracts. Here is the total of these four. And I also have something in the script where we account for commissions. So net profit of commissions will be in this column here. And then column R will just keep track of our equity curve. So here I believe we started with 10,000 and for each of the trades, it will keep track of how much our portfolio is actually worth at the very end. We also have a column for drawdowns, another to keep track of the number of trades we have placed. And this column is just for the drawdown duration in days, since this is daily data. So some of the requirements are having futures data to back test. I know that it's kind of hard to come across, but I have a video in my channel where I show you where I get the data. And I also have a video on how to store data in a database. So I'll be using MySQL database to call in some data. All right, so let's go to the script. So these are some of the packages we're going to require. So I didn't use all the futures contracts because this process takes a while to calculate the strategy. So I just put a couple of tickers or contracts that I thought would be a good mix, such as index contracts and currencies, some interest rates and a few commodities. So I'll go ahead and run this. And then I'm going to use this function to call from my database so that I get these tickers. So that's what this function does. So we'll go ahead and minimize this function here. I'll just call in the tickers from my database. All right. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subset my futures data to this date range here, and we'll do a walk forward test for the remainder of the years from 2019 to present. So we'll run this here. I'm just formatting the index to include only Monday through Friday and exclude any NYSC holidays. So I'm not going to trade the weekends or any holidays to keep everything constant. All right, so I'm going to use the ticker names to create combinations of tickers. So I'll show you what that is. So this is our combination of tickers. So this first column will be our independent variable and the rest will be our dependent variables. So this basket of three contracts will try to predict the first column essentially. All right, so I'm going to run this to get the number of rows. So I'll use that combinations table to extract the tickers. I'm going to run a regression 
and then extract the betas and the p-values for each of these pairs in our combinations table. I have about 6,000 different combinations, but it doesn't take too long to calculate. So I'll go ahead and run this. All right, guys, so now I'm going to rbind all the results and format the column names. So we'll take a look at that data frame. So here we have each of the pairs, the betas, and the p-value. So now I'm just going to convert the p-value to a numeric vector. And also, I'm, I just want to extract the statistically significant pairs. I'm going to leave out everything else. So I'll go ahead and run this block. And we'll take a look at pairs 2. So I have about 1,500 different pairs, each with a p-value of 1%. All right, so let's go back to our script. So I had to create a lookup table for each of these contracts because I can't use percentages since that wouldn't be a correct way of calculating the returns for our equity curve. So what I ended up doing was making two tables, one for the minimum tick value of each contract. So this first contract's minimum tick value will be this one and so on and so forth for the rest. And the tick value for each of the contracts are in the same order. So this will help us calculate our P&L and keep track of our equity curve. All right, so this function called returns is where I specify the strategy. And I left some comments to specify what each line is doing. All right, so I'll go ahead and minimize this function and then run it along with this block of code. All right, the future strat function will create that table I showed you at the beginning of the video where we have our drawdowns, the number of trades, our entries and exits, along with the signals. So I'll briefly go over this. So I'm passing in the returns we calculated here. And one of my other parameters is the starting equity. So here I'm, I'm setting the starting equity at 50,000. I'll extract the pairs, get the betas, and then I'm going to calculate the trade price for each of the assets. And then here's where we kind of use our lookup tables. I'm going to calculate the number of points we made or lost for each of the trades. And I also considered bid and offer cost. So whatever the price is for that bar, I'm going to take away a tick or add a tick, depending if we're long or short, to kind of consider the bid and offer. And then also you'll see sign. That'll be if we're long or short that specific contract. Uh, one thing to note is that whenever we have negative betas, we will have to take the opposite side of the trade. So if we're long the basket, then I will long asset two, which will be this contract, and then short asset three, and then short asset four. Alternatively, if we're short the basket, then that means I will be short the second asset, and then long these two. So that's what the negative betas are. So to account for that, I have placed this sign, which will take the opposite side of the trade. All right, so we'll have four of these to calculate the points for each of the assets. I will then calculate the gross profit. I will calculate the net profit by taking away commissions. So here we have four contracts times 225 of commissions. And since this is a round trip, it'll be 225 times eight of commissions and you can adjust it by just changing to whatever your commissions are. Here I'll just calculate the equity, the drawdowns, keep track of the number of trades, and then this final block is just to keep track of the drawdown duration. And then finally when we have calculated everything, just return the data set, which will look like the table I showed you at the beginning of the video. So I'll go ahead and minimize this function. We'll go ahead and run this function. And then for each of the pairs, I'm going to calculate the strategy and also the returns. So this part is what takes the longest. For about 6,000 different pairs, it took me about four to five hours. So I'm not going to run this because I have already ran it and saved it as an RDS file. So what I'll do is I'm just going to read it back in. So this variable all will be a list. So what I'll do is I'm going to extract that equity curve column for each of the pairs. So I'll go ahead and run this to extract the equity curves. And then I'll merge them together. 
All right, so this will be the location of the best pairs and the worst pairs. And I'll use those because I'm going to plot all the equity curves. So I need to set my Y limit. So I'll pass in the location of the best and worst equity curves to get a sense of how much I need to adjust my Y axis. So I'll go ahead and plot that. And then I'll use a for loop to plot the rest of the equity curves. And then I'll highlight the best equity curve in blue. So if we take a look at the plot, all right, so for the most part, we can see that this is our zero line. So it looks like most of the pairs were profitable, the blue line being the best, which returned over 300,000 at the end of 2018. So for 10 years, it made roughly $300,000 in profits. But again, this is in sample, so we need to test the out of sample data. So what I'll do is I'm going to extract the top 10 best performing pairs that are in sample. I'm going to apply those same betas to the add a sample data to see what the equity curves look like. And just by the looks of it, I see that we don't trade that often because we see these flat lines. So that may be an issue down the road because when it doesn't trade that often, that means that we have to keep rolling over our futures contracts, which may be an issue. But again, we'll take a look at the results. Uh, further down the script. Uh, what you can also do is instead of extracting the top 10 performing equity curves, what you can also test for is first ordering by which pairs traded the most since we have a column there that calculated the number of trades for this time period and then you can subset by the best performing equity curves. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. So we'll go ahead and close this out to calculate our add a sample results. Uh, we can also do view best so this was our best performing pair so if we scroll down to the bottom we see that we generated 157 trades but remember by looking at those flat lines in our equity curves we could kind of tell it took a long time between each signal this is our actual ending balance so it was actually over 350,000 but again returning to the number of trades it was roughly 15 or 16 trades per year on average so we'll go ahead and close this out. So I'll extract the top 10 best equity curves. And then I need to format the names to extract what contracts I need to call. So we'll go ahead and do that. I need to subset my betas to just those top 10. And then I noticed that in my newer data, I didn't have this contract. So I need to exclude the pairs forward that had GLB in it. So that'll be row five. So that's what I did here. Also to remove it from the names of the tickers I need to call. And then I don't actually have 2019 and 2020 data in a database. I just have them saved in RDS files. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just listing all the files and then calling them back in. I would subset by ticker or contract, group by date, and then I applied a filter on the open interest where I only wanted to select the data with the highest open interest, and that would be our front month. Same thing for our volume, and then I used the unique wrapper to only extract unique rows. So that's what this block is for, so I'll go ahead and apply it. And then I'm going to rbind using rbind list. So if we take a look at the E-mini S&P 500 again, we will only see one iteration of dates for each row, which are all unique. And this will adjust our data set for rolling over contracts. All right. So then I need to convert that data set into an XTS object. So I wrote a function to do that. So I'll go ahead and run that function. And then I'll call all the tickers that I need and merge all the closing prices together and then extract only 2019 to present. And then I'm gonna make the index unique to strip out the time. And then this code is essentially the same thing as I ran above. I'm excluding holidays, weekends, and then I'm also going to R bind it with our first data set, which included 2008 to 2018. So I'll go ahead and run this block. And then this returns function and future strat is essentially the same thing. All that I changed was I changed pairs two with pairs forward, which only contains the pairs for the top 10 
best performing equity curves. So I'll go ahead and minimize these functions. Go ahead and run them. And then the rest is essentially the same thing, just repeating. So I'll go ahead and run this until I plot them. But I'm only going to plot the add a sample data, which is 2019 to present. So if we take a look at the plot, all right, so this is what the equity curves look like at a sample. So we do see a lot of flat lines, which means that most of these did not trade between these years. And we had a few that probably just traded once or a couple of times throughout this time period. So again, what you can test is to subset by the number of trades and then subset by the top 10. So this turned out to be the best performing at a sample. And if we take a look at 2019 so starting 2019 we had 177 trades and at the end we had 179 so it only traded twice so i didn't get the results i was looking for but maybe you can alter this code to get a better result uh, this concludes the video please let me know if you have any questions or you could just leave a comment Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.